Invasive mussels are affecting the Great Lakes in ways never before experienced or even imagined. I would say that there has not been a component of the food web of the Great Lakes that has not been affected one way or another by what the zebra mussels and now the quagga mussels have done. So the suggestion is that the quagga mussels are eating the food that that many pounds of bait fish uh, would have eaten and therefore short-circuited the food web. The quagga mussels are not only destroying the food web needed for an abundance of game fish, they are changing the entire underwater ecosystem. Here's how. You're going to have two tubes that stick out. One is called the inhalant siphon, and the other one is called the exhalant siphon. Like other species of mussels, the quagga feeds by sucking in water that contains nutritious plankton and then expelling filtered water. The plankton is a critical part of the food chain, and the quagga mussel has a voracious appetite. For centuries, the plankton population of Lake Michigan had been dominated by something called diatoms. Which are large algae, we call them the juicy steak of the food web. A nutritious food source for tiny animals called zooplankton. Zooplankton is consumed by small prey fish like perch, alewives and chubs, which are eaten by larger fish like lake trout, salmon and walleye. So as the populations of mussels increased, the amount of the large juicy algae has decreased significantly. What's left are tiny, tiny algae, we call them the sunflower seeds in the shell, which are also nutritious but very difficult to eat because they're very small. The lack of diatoms at the bottom of the food chain has seriously affected the health, size and numbers of fish at the top of the food chain. The invasive mussels constantly filter the water, leaving less food or energy in the upper water column where the fish eat, bringing what little energy is left to the bottom. In essence, turning the lake upside down. Jeff Weborg is a fourth generation fisherman from Gills Rock, Wisconsin, on the shores of Lake Michigan. It's become very difficult to, to really invest in a business anymore because you don't really have a any idea if you're going to be able to keep on fishing. He says diaporea, or freshwater shrimp, a food staple for whitefish, has virtually disappeared from the lake. And so as a consequence, the whitefish have switched from eating those to whatever they can get. Including the quagga mussels, which are difficult to digest and have little nutritional value. Today, because sea mussels are stripping out the food sources for whitefish, the whitefish are much smaller, the, they're emaciated, their stomachs are shrunk in. They're still there, they're still alive, but the growth rates are slower and the reproduction is less. 20% of the world's fresh water is right here. Uh, and you can see, you may see all these boats out here, they're harvesting salmon. That's a several billion dollar sports fishery that depends on a healthy food web. Uh, the state of Michigan has, for instance, has decreased their uh, salmon stocking uh, by 50%, mainly because there's nothing for them, those fish to feed on. And the rate at which the quaggas can steal the food from a water column is staggering. Dr. Russell Cool has filled two beakers with lake water, abundant with plankton. He's also added a few quagga mussels to just the beaker on the right. In just 11 minutes, the quaggas have completely cleared the water of nutritious algae. Imagine what quadrillions of quaggas are doing to the Great Lakes food web. If you just put your hand in the water up to your wrist, you couldn't see your fingers. Uh, this was a year before mussels got in. And a year after, you could, you could see the bottom in, in, in 20 feet of water. That's how quickly it happened. A zebra mussel the size of my thumb can filter a liter or roughly a quart of water a day. And that's why when they come into lakes, the water typically becomes clearer. Now, a lot of people like that. Oh, look at the water's clearer. It can turn into bad news quickly. Not only does clear water indicate there's little or no food for the fish, it also means that sunlight can penetrate deeper into the lake. That means lots of unwanted aquatic plants, better known as weeds. Coming up. They attach themselves to everything, creating some very sticky situations and costing native mussels their lives. Plus, researchers in New York may have discovered a silver bullet in the fight to control